There are six different types of healthy boundaries that each of us needs to have for the sake of our own mental health and well-being and for the health of our relationships. Do you know what they are? Do you have any of them? Do you have all of them? Do you have none of them? You're going to find out soon enough. Over the next several talks, I'm going to be going in depth about each of the six types of healthy boundaries, what they look like, what it looks like when we have them, what it looks like when they're being violated, and you are going to have a whole different understanding about boundaries and how to set them and keep them in clear, kind, and healthy ways by the end of this series. But first, if you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, say hello in the comment section below. If you're back again, it's always good to have you. Special shout out to my shifters. Really great to have you here. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, button's about right down there. Like the video if you get something out of it. That would be amazing. And either way, my name is Julia Christina. I'm a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, that you can get more information about in the description below. I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. Now, here's the thing about boundaries. The reason why so many among us struggle to set and keep our boundaries is because we have this idea, a mistaken idea, that boundaries are going to make us difficult, rigid, that they are going to push people away, that people are going to think that we are mean or difficult or unkind, that we are going to become isolated in behind our boundaries. But that is just not true. Yes, very difficult, very rigid boundaries, like behind a brick wall, that can happen. But when we are setting clear and kind and healthy boundaries, they work to both protect and preserve our own mental health, and they work to protect and preserve the health of our relationships. So it's the exact opposite that's true. But because so few really understand what healthy boundaries are, we rarely see them working well. But when they do, they make all the difference. There's this beautiful quote by Prentice Hempel that sums it up perfectly. It says, boundaries are the distance at which I can love you and me simultaneously. The other thing about boundaries is that most of the time, people aren't intentionally trying to violate your boundaries. They might have different ideas about where boundaries are or where they should or shouldn't be based on their own boundary preferences. And so often people are existing from that place. They think if this is okay for me, that it should be okay for this person too. And so people are coming from their own perspective of things because they don't know where your boundaries are. And so they're not necessarily violating them intentionally. It could also be because you don't really know where your boundaries are because you've never been asked or really taken the time to take a step back and reflect on that one, get to know yourself and be able to connect with where your boundaries are so you haven't been able to communicate them. And you don't really know when a boundary has been crossed until it absolutely has been crossed but then you might not even know that it was a boundary that was crossed. You just know that something doesn't feel right, but you don't know what to do about it. So that is what we are going to clear up in this series. We're going to talk about all the different types of boundaries starting today with physical boundaries. So let's get right into this. Physical boundaries. Physical boundaries include your personal space, how comfortable you are with touch and different kinds of touch, your food and drink needs, what you need for your physical body to thrive, to be well, and your rest needs. All of these are going to vary from person to person and situation to situation. And it's not always a hard and fast rule across the board about where your boundaries are, which is why it's so important to be getting to know yourself to be developing that relationship with yourself so you can be tuning in to where your boundaries are with each of these physical things in different situations. Now, I have a guide that's going to help you with that. It's called My Simple Steps to Self-Trust, and that's going to be the foundational piece for you to start building that healthy, secure, knowing relationship with yourself. You can get that in the description 
below. One of the biggest reasons why so many among us struggle to pay attention to and respect our physical boundaries or even know where they are is because many among us have been raised to believe that other people's wants, needs, and preferences are more important than our own. That it's our job to make other people happy. It's our job, not only that, but to never make anyone else feel uncomfortable, even at the expense of our own discomfort. It's our job to make sure that we are keeping the peace, that other people are doing well, and we don't actually stop to think about how I am a person in this situation, and I need to be doing well as well. It's not all about me, but it's not never about me. So it can be a whole new idea. It can be a whole new concept to be creating space for our own physical boundaries, our own physical wants, needs, and preferences in a relationship. For some, this is going to be mind-blowing. For others, you're going to be like, yeah, I knew that, but I guess I've never really applied it. And for even some, you might be like, yeah, totally knew that, totally good with that. But here's the thing. You are allowed to say how you do and do not want to be touched. You are allowed to say when you need some physical space in any particular way. You are allowed to say when you are hungry, when you are thirsty, and when you need rest. And not only that, you are allowed to follow through on meeting those needs and preferences for yourself when you need to. How often are you struggling in silence? Are you uncomfortable? Are you starving or thirsty or exhausted, but not saying anything? Now, there is times when you're in a group and it doesn't make sense that you're stopping or putting aside or deviating from the group every five minutes for every person that has a need for food or, or water or rest. There can be a collective conversation about when you're going to take breaks, when you're going to stop for food, when you're going to get water, what that's going to look like, how to kind of make sure that everyone's on the same page, but making sure that everyone's on the same page, that everyone is in agreement and you know what's happening. Or if you're in a group with a leader that's saying, you know what, we can't stop now for a food or drink. And then you're sitting there being like, okay, well, what's going on? When can we stop? It's their job to let you know what's coming, what you can expect. So you're not sitting there struggling and needing these needs to be met, but having no idea when they're going to be met. Now I'm going to teach you what you could say to set a clear and healthy boundary in each of these subcategories of our bigger category of physical boundaries. So the first one, when it comes to your physical space, let's say you have someone in your life or maybe some ones in your life that like to stop by unannounced. They just show up at your door and want to come in, want to have a visit, want to be a part of the rest of your day, whatever that is. And for whatever reason, you don't need to justify it. You're not comfortable with that. If someone is going to stop by, a friend or even a family member, you are allowed to want them to call before they stop by. Now, that person might not think that it, maybe if it comes to family, you shouldn't have to call first. It should just be open door policy. But those are not your thoughts. Those are not your preferences. So maybe you've said to them, hey, before you stop by, if you could call me first just to make sure it's a good time, that would be great. So you are stating your preference. And let's say that they show up unannounced regardless. They've kind of just blown through your request and are showing up and violating that boundary. Now, what you would say to hold that boundary could sound something like, hey, I've asked you not to stop by unannounced without calling first. So if you do that again, I am not going to answer the door. If you'd like to come in, then I'd like you to call first and us to talk about a time that works for both of us. But again, if you stop by unannounced, I will not answer the door. 
So you've stated, this is what I am going to do. And again, boundaries are about what we are going to do. It's not about controlling or changing or trying to force someone else to do something else. It's about saying, in light of your choice, this is my choice based on my wants, needs, and preferences. The next subcategory of our physical boundaries could just be around our own physical space, how you want to be touched, how you don't want to be touched. Let's say you're someone who doesn't really like to hug, or at least you don't like to hug someone unless you know them really well and feel really comfortable with them. Again, those are your preferences. You don't have to justify it or explain it. You could simply say, hey, I'm not a big hugger, but I love a good handshake. Simple as that. The next subcategory, your food and drink needs, just being able to say, hey, I'm really hungry. I need to get a snack. Or when could we stop for a snack? Or I'm really thirsty. I'm going to take a minute and have a drink of water before we go on. Being able to say what your food and drink needs are and being able to to honor them and respect them before you are absolutely famished or getting into hangry zone or you are so thirsty and almost starting to panic because you are so thirsty and haven't said that you needed to get water because you didn't want to disrupt anything or put anyone out. You are allowed to put people out and it's probably not even going to put them out all that much because who is going to argue with you about your sustenance needs. As long as you're not saying you need to stop for a snack and a drink every five seconds and are holding the entire group up, just being able to say, yeah, this is what I need right now and being able to respect that and honor that and take care of that for yourself and if necessary, asking for support in that. If there's someone else is driving, someone else is leading, you're a part of something with another person, being able to assert that. And then when it comes to our rest needs, I think it's so interesting how often in our culture we see rest as an extra. Rest as something that needs to be earned only when we have pushed ourselves to the absolute limit and done it all and accomplished it all and achieved it all and are absolutely exhausted that we are allowed to rest. What about just resting and taking that time for ourselves to rest when we need it, when we know that we will be feeling better, thinking better, moving better, experiencing better in life when we have more rest, being able to just take that time for ourselves, being able to say, I'm just going to go and have a little rest. I'm feeling like I need a rest or being able to say, you know, I'm going to go to bed earlier tonight because I've been feeling tired and I want to get a good sleep. You don't even have to justify it. Just be able to say, I'm going to bed early because I like going to bed early. Or like my sister-in-law is so good at this, regardless if they have company over or if, you know, there's things going on around the house. She will just say at her bedtime, she'll be like, hey, I need to get ready for bed. You all are welcome to stay as long as you like. Just, you know, shut the door or lock the door or whatever on the way out. Turn off the lights, turn off the stove, whatever it is you know, shut things down on the way out, but I need to get to bed. You can leave now if you'd like, or you are welcome to stay, but I am going to bed. Good night, everyone. Great to have you here. And is just so good and respecting that need within herself because she knows that she needs a good sleep in order to thrive. So being able to respect those things within ourselves. What do you need for your physical health and well-being? And what boundaries Are you ready to start setting around that? Another part of this that we didn't specifically mention was even around your exercise needs. Being able to say, if someone's like, you know, uh, can you have a meeting from this time to this time? And if you have already blocked off in your calendar that that is your time to go for a walk, to go for a run, to hit the gym, being able to say, I'm not available at that time. It's so interesting how We will plan to do things for ourselves, for our well-being, to take care of our physical needs. And then if someone asks something of us or someone has a request, we are so quick to just put that thing aside and schedule something else in. Instead of seeing that appointment that you made with yourself for your physical health needs is allowed to have boundaries around it. It's allowed to be protected, 
to be respected and to be preserved. You're allowed to say, I'm not available at that time. I have a previous commitment. Treating it like any other important commitment that would prompt you to say you're not available at that time because that is an important commitment. Having our physical boundaries violated can either feel really uncomfortable, like when someone is touching you in a way that you don't like, or is coming too physically close to you in a way that you don't like, or is entering your space in a way that you don't like, or they can cause us to feel really trapped and either resentful or angry, like when we are not able to have a physical need met, like our need for food, our need for water, our need for rest, and our need for movement. And again, this can vary from person to person and situation to situation, which is why it's so important to be really taking the time to tune into yourself, to connect with yourself, to build a healthy relationship with yourself and understand yourself at a deeper level. So making sure you are taking the time to invest in the one person that you have to live with every second of every day from birth until death. That relationship is important. If you want help with this, I've got two things for you. I've got the simple steps to self-trust that is going to be that foundation for building that healthy, secure, and solid relationship with yourself, really getting to know yourself better because as all relationships that are good and strong and healthy, they have to be founded in trust. That's what you're going to learn there. And also, I have my free guide for you, 25 ways to say no that are clear and kind. So you can grab that, both of those, in the description below. Let me know which one of these connected with you. Which one of these are you like, oh, I didn't realize that that was a physical boundary that I have been having violated. And or I didn't know that I was allowed to have boundaries around that one. I didn't know I was allowed to preserve, protect, and respect that physical boundary. Let me know. It is always good to have you here. Don't forget to be good to yourself. Be good to those around you. And until next time, take good care.